So let's look at what happens when um, implementing some of the uh, one of the basic concepts of of, of our of our hashing algorithm. So the hashing algorithm in particular that we're interested in is linear probing. Um, so let's highlight that. So we're doing linear probing. Um, in another example, we'll do another type of, um, of probing called double hashing. So what we have are a set of keys that we wish to put into a table. And these keys are, are going to be what we use to extract information out of the table. And the keys are the 4, 21, 22, 3, 8, and so forth. So those are the keys. Those keys, you can think about them as being social security numbers. Um, I'm using smaller numbers because it's easier to communicate the basic ideas. Um, so these numbers, like in the 4, 21, 22, that's an alternative to using a full-on social security number, something like this. So that's more commonly what we would use to associate an object with a position. We extract a person's, um, some information from our object that's unique, and then we put it into an array. We put that object into an array. Now the problem though is that this number is quite large. So to declare arrays um, of millions, of size millions and billions is just not efficient. Um, so normally what we will do with our keys um, is consider how many items we wish to put into our table or our array. Um, so say for example I need to put 40 or 50 um, objects into an array, I might use something like mod 101 because that's going to guarantee that my uh, array of size of 100 um, will occupy enough space to consider and input all 50 and it will be um, array index positions 0 through 100 that will be used and so we're not using um, the billions that would be necessary so it's an array of size 101 versus billions. So now to communicate these ideas, let's work with smaller numbers and assume that they're social security numbers. These are our keys. So these keys are going to map into an array position. So I'm going to write these keys, that's a K there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and map 4, 21, and 22, and so forth. Each one of those will be mapped into a certain position. So um, this is my uh, a simplified version of my hash function where I just multiply the key by a value and then add another value. So I've simplified what actually goes on with an actual hash function. So I'm going to multiply the value by 4 and then I'll multiply it by 2 and then add 4. And then after I get done with that, I will use a mod 13 because let's say I only have 6 or 7 values that I want to put into my key. So my um, values would be 2, 4, 21, 22, 3, 8, 29, and 34. And just to do a couple of these, um, double the value and add 4 would be 2 times 4 is 8 plus 4 is 12. This one is 41 times 2. 21 times 2 is 42 plus 4 is 46. And so that's what the rest of that table would look like. Now the mod 13, 12 mod 13 is just simply 12. 46 mod 13 um, 13 goes into 46, 3 with the remainder of 3. So 36, um, 46 divided by 13 is 3 with the remainder of 7, actually. 
right? Because 13 times 3 is 39 at 7. So these are the remainders. So we would have 7, 9, 10, 7, 10, and 7. So this is my hash function. My 13 corresponds to my array size or my table size. So it's going to be an array of size 13, which I'm going to, which means I'll have values for array indices going from 0 to 12. Okay, so my array looks like that. Now, the key here, 4, maps into position 12. 21 would map into position 7. 22 into position uh, 9, 3 into 10, 8 into 7, but we see that 7 was used previously, so there's a collision. 8 goes into 7, so we're going to do um, a, a slide over. We're just going to kind of keep searching. That's linear probing. We're going to probe the table until we find an empty position. Therefore, our 8 which collided at 7 gets placed into position 8. Notice that there will also be collisions at these two as well since they had occurred earlier, 7 and 10. So 29 um, tries to, uh, it looks to be inserted into position 10 and 29 in fact ends up going into position 11. Now as we're trying to insert these values as we probe plus one plus one plus one that increment of plus i is actually plus i and it's um, plus i and it's modulus the table size so that when we um, the table size is 13 right so that when we ultimately do something like a 12 mod 13 it's 12 but if we do end up having to keep incrementing over to 13 we end up wrapping around to position 0. So 34, which was supposed to go into um, position 7, will end up plus 1, plus 1, until it finds an empty slot over here. So that 34 ends up going into position 0. So that's how linear probing works. Now. One thing to consider is that that was linear probing, but there are other forms of probing that prevent this clustering. So there's quadratic programming um, that would not go by one, but it might go by um, by spaces of 4, 8, 16, and so forth. Now, this table that we're looking at, of the 13 items, or the 13 um, positions available to us, it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven out of 13. And so that value is the percentage loaded. Sometimes you'll see the percentage loaded or that fraction as a lambda, L, Greek L. Or sometimes you'll see it as an alpha to indicate um, the load factor. So let's just use lambda here. The load factor in this case is 7 thirteenths. So there's another form of this algorithm called dynamic hash insertion, where every time lambda, right, where we're at least 50% full, once we hit where we're 50% full, we could just double the array size. copy everything over, do a rehash, and put everything over into a new, much larger array to eliminate this type of effect where we have the clusters that we see here. So that's linear probing.